I believe I'd like to hear your testimony again. Witness, please tell us only what you saw, not what you thought. How dare you. My powers of deduction are not to be underestimated. Really, now? Okay, Angel's deduction. We don't want the deduction, we want to... Lana Sky intended to murder Detective Goodman. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge the knife in again and again. With only one knife wound. The victim was summoned from the police department to the prosecutor's office. It does sound a lot like premeditation, doesn't it? So, if I order a pizza, does that mean I'm planning to kill the delivery boy? In any case, the defense may now, may now cross examine the witness. Okay, so we know immediately the problem with that one. <laughs> one knife wound. Objection. You say she stabbed him again and again. But you couldn't have witnessed that. Are you testing me? Then I'll test you. With my mass of surprise. I'm afraid the mass is growing under our feet as we wade, Ms. Star. Hmm? What do you mean? I shouldn't have to explain this, but take a look. The autopsy report states that death was due to a loss of blood from one stab wound. Aha, oh, you're right. Good show, Mr. Edgeworth. What a hunk. He's my hero, really. Oh, what about my objection? No one noticed. Well, witness. <laughs> you got the crime scene set, right? Oh, oh, thanks. I always believed that no one could ever mistake ketchup for blood. But now I realize that such mistakes are possible. So, you're saying you mistook something for blood? When she lifted her knife, I thought I saw blood at her breast. Splattered blood from her victim. That's why I thought she must have stabbed him at least twice. And tell us what you saw that you thought was blood. Testify. Hmm. Her red muffler looked like blood to me. That's how ghastly the whole scene was. Red muffler, huh? Is she wearing a red muffler in this... She's not wearing a red muffler in this photograph. Not if I understand what the word muffler means, which is entirely possible. Miss Star, I demand an explanation. A witness is clearly not suited for detective work. What? The suspect was not wearing a scarf or muffler of any kind when she stabbed the victim. You proved it yourself with this photograph. Huh? But, but that... that can't be! Only a professional lunch lady can be so utterly clueless. Congratulations. Perhaps you've finally found your true calling in life. Hmm. Harsh words, but good. In the end, Mr. Edward prevails. <laughs> what was my objection? Chopped liver? But it was there. A scarf. No, not that. But something red. Really. Well, now, where were we? A witness has given us an entertaining interlude, but back to business. What? Very well, witness. Continue your testimony. You saw the crime and apprehended the suspect. Tell us about that. Mm -hmm. Very well. I do remember some things accurately. Ultimately, we couldn't shake the most important part of her testimony. The most important part? 
the part where your sister stabs the victim. This next testimony might just be the moment of truth. Apprehending a suspect. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition off to her side. I quickly caught her. How? Through the fence? Explained her rights to her and arrested her on the spot. Ah yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. The chief prosecutor made to escape, but against Angel Star, resistance is futile. You are quite determined about this scarf, aren't you? I strike like a snake and bite like a cobra. That's me, Angel Star. That wasn't a very good metaphor. First of all, a cobra is a kind of snake. Don't bother me with details unless you want to get bitten. No, thanks. Note to self, Mr. Wright is weak against poisonous steak bites. <laughs> the chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. Those are pretty heavy. An oil drum? Hard to imagine. Oh, she's beautiful, but deadly. A predator, this one. A leopard woman. <laughs> Very well, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, if you will. Okay, but... How did you quickly catch her? Explain. When you say quickly, were you close to the suspect? As I just said, I was only 30 feet away from her the whole time. Hmm, maybe I should press her for more details. Yes, press. I'd like to see this on the floor plans just to be safe. The Lunchland car was... She was a visitor, thus she was parked in B-Block. So, you witnessed the murder from here? That would make it about 30 feet from the car, yes. Is that correct, Ms. Star? Yes, that's right. But there was a chain-link fence in front of you? I went over it, of course. Amazing! A cough up queen, lunch lady athlete indeed. It had taken her a little time to find me with the fence. So she couldn't have gotten to my sister that fast. That's a floor to ceiling for it. Yeah. Yeah, that fence was about nine feet high, too. So how did Miss Sky not get away? You say quickly. Were you? Yeah, we just did this. As you just said, yes. Oh, we just did this. Why would she mention the muffler? Who does that? She mentioned the muffler. What exactly did she say? If I remembered exactly, I would have told you my testimony. Cheeky. Anyway, all I heard her say was the word muffler. Was that one word? So, what you heard wasn't the suspect talking to you, but to someone else. Yes, the chief prosecutor was talking on her phone. Her phone? She can't mean. Ask further, yes. By phone, do you mean this cell phone discovered the crime scene? Yes, ultimately. Ultimately... My memory... It's like a salmon heading upstream, you see. No? No, the court doesn't see it, Miss Star. The chief prosecutor first attempted to use the phone hanging on the wall. On the wall? That's right. Near the car, there was an emergency phone on a wall, which you wouldn't be able to see while you were climbing over the fence! Apparently it was out of order. And so she used her cell phone. Indeed, the emergency phone was out of order that day. Hmm. Good witnessing witness. 
Good witnessing. Whatever happened to good testifying? You should, of course, add this to your testimony. The things I do to please this rookie defense attorney. The word muffler was overheard during a call made to Emma at 518. How? How did you see it? You could see nothing. Um, do you think you could restate your testimony for the court? Aha. Uh -huh. I was going to ask the same thing. I only say this one time, so listen close, rookies. Chief Prosecutor stabbed the victim and ran behind the partition. You know there's a partition there. She picked up the emergency phone on the wall, but it was out of order. So she pulled her own cell phone out of her pocket. <laughs> and during that time, you climbed over the chain link fence. <laughs> then when I boldly grabbed her arm, the chief prosecutor hung up her phone. And you saw her doing this? What is it, Mr. Wright? Yeah, you saw no such thing because of the divider. You even mentioned the partition. <clears throat> Miss Starr, I have to conclude that you have a personal grudge against Miss Lana Skye. Objection! Her witness is a former detective. Her testimony is unmarred by personal bias. Yeah, that. Who would have thought that you would be my knight in shining armor, prosecutor? You, who, together with the chief prosecutor, kicked me out two years ago? Hello, Motive! Hmm. Well, Ms. Starr, this is a fatal contradiction with your testimony. How do you explain this? Hmm? I don't know what you're talking about. Mess with me, and I'll make you cough it all up. <clears throat> Let's look at the floor plans. You said you witnessed the crime from this point. However, if that's true, you couldn't possibly have seen Miss Skye making that phone call. <sighs> I believe you see what I'm getting at. That emergency phone was on the backside of this partition. If indeed you were in B block, you couldn't have seen it. Wah! Order, order, what is the meaning of this? It's simple, Your Honor. She's not coughing up lunch, she's coughing up lies. <sighs> That's quite a claim, Mr. Wright. Perhaps you will allow me a question? Tell us exactly what lie this witness has told the court. Here's where the counterattack begins. I can't afford to get this wrong. The witness lied about, uh, where she saw it. She was on A-side, somehow, but then... That makes the photo weird. Um... I mean, she's been lying about what she saw. But it just hinted at it being where she saw it, I don't know. Miss Skye tried to use the emergency phone, but it was out of order. What is significant about this fact? Nothing. Therefore, it would be pointless for Miss Starr to lie about it. Pointless to lie, I see. But say the witness did actually see Miss Skye using the emergency phone. It would mean... Miss Starr witnessed the crime from a different location. A different location? Now that's a pointless lie if I ever heard one. Before you call my lie pointless, at least let me tell it. <laughs> let me ask a question to our clever wordsmith, Mr. Wright. Just where was the witness when she saw the crime? All the testimony we've heard until now points in one direction. The place from where Ms. La Ms. Star witnessed this crime was here. Probably the security room? 
Her boyfriend. Sniff her boyfriend, yes. This is the only place where she could have been. The security guard room? Indeed, the security room in the underground parking lot is well positioned. It's built on the second floor, so you can see the entire lot. Hmm. She would have been able to see the emergency phone from there. But why there? There are many other places where she could have seen the phone. Not in this case, Your Honor. The witness, not being part of the prosecutor's office, couldn't park in A block. The only place where she could have seen the crime and the back of the partition is here. I remember in your testimony you said... You brought a lunch to your boyfriend in the security guard room, yes? Well, Ms. Star? <sighs> How many years have I been getting the better of men? To think that the tables could be turned. Today, a man has got the better of Angel Star. Order, order, witness. What have you done? You used to be a detective. You should know better. I'm not turning back. The guilty will be punished. And I'll do what I must to make sure justice prevails. The guilty? Is she talking about Miss Skye? Um, Mr. Wright? Doesn't it strike you as odd? Why didn't Miss Star lie? It doesn't make sense. Huh? She could have just said she saw the car from the security guard station. It wouldn't change anything. Exactly. This photograph tells all. It was the defendant who stabbed the victim. The truth still stands. But who took that picture? It still stands. I disagree, Mr. Edgeworth. What? If a witness is found to be lying, they're guilty of perjury. She knows this. She wouldn't risk that without a good reason. <clears throat> so, tell us what her reason was, Mr. Wright. Hmm. Huh? Me? Who else? Mr. Wright, let's review what we know. Miss Starr witnessed the crime from the security guard station. But she lied and said she saw it from B-Block. It must make a vital difference, but what? What would change? Distance to the crime, for one. I mean, it does change the angle, but I mean, that doesn't change, that's not a vital difference. But it does put her closer here, well, I don't know. <clears throat> It changes the distance between her and the scene of the crime. Objection! My condolences, Mr. Wright, but one look at the floor plans and it's quite clear. The distance between the scene of the crime and the guard station is 30 feet. Let's see how that would change what she could see. Objection! The partition? What she saw is not in question here. What matters is the time it would take her to reach the scene of the crime. Miss Starr, you witnessed the crime from the security guard station. Through the partition. Now, how long did it take you to go from there to the scene of the crime where you arrested Miss Skye? Hmm. Well, witness? You... Yes? You ordered the squid wheels, right? The quality of my lunches has gone from low to inevitable. Inedible. I was bringing a PB and J lunch with fresh poison berry jam to my boyfriend. Mmm, poison berry for the boyfriend. He wasn't in the station, so I waited. I witnessed the crime from the glass walled station. And before I knew what I was doing, I found myself running towards the sea. But the door was locked. I couldn't open it. Really? So you went all this way around, which is where you got your photograph. Long after the moment of the crime. That's where I had to go through the visitor's parking in B-Block. That's quite a detour. 
Hmm? It probably took me at least five minutes to get to the scene of the crime. Okay. <laughs> five minutes. Hmm. This changes things considerably. It was that woman over there in the defendant's chair who stabbed him. I know it. I have photographic evidence. I swear it. I swear it on my finest plastic spork. You have a point, and the spork is a wonderful invention. Would you like another caviar lunch? Absolutely. Oh. Mr. Riot, you have to do something. Do I have any evidence to stop this? I believe I... Mm. Well, I mean... Yes, you do. Because the car was there at 5.12. You interrupted the call at 5.18. There wasn't really... That's six minutes right there, and then you have the photograph. I don't know. I th yeah, you don't have time for this. Five minutes between the witnessing of the murder and the arrest. Think about it. You could make pasta in that amount of time, if you'd like it al dente. I've got lunchboxes that tie pasta into knots, rookie. A five minute blank. Isn't that strange? Strange? If you were a criminal, what would you do with five minutes, Your Honor? Well, um, I guess I'd flee the scene. Hey, don't get the wrong idea. I didn't kill anyone. But you have the instincts of a killer. You would run, but this time was different. Miss Sky dawdled at the scene of the crime. She even had her picture taken. No true criminal would act this way. It's inconceivable. Yeah. Well then, it seems we've come to the end of this testimony. The witness has a grudge against the defendant and a blank in her testimony. <sighs> Mr. Edgeworth, is the next witness ready to go? Unfortunately, I appear to have overestimated this witness on account of her professional history. We did it! We screwed that can shut, Mr. Wright. But that was too close. I'm afraid that the cough-up queen has been dethroned, and with that, court is adjourned. <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth, you ordered the squid wheels, right? And that's the one she tried to foist off on me. I prefer not to take the defense team's leftovers. Anything else to say? I might be able to save you. I have decisive evidence. What was that? Is this another one of the trick lunchboxes? My apologies, but we have no further questions to ask of you, Miss Starr. Ah. Is this your jumbo lunchbox? Woohoo, a triple decker! <laughs> Out of deference to the witness's determination, I'll allow one more testimony. Let's hear about this decisive evidence. Like the lunch landmata says, you won't be disappointed. What's she going to pull out of her lunchbox this time? <laughs>